Hi everyone, I'm Steve, here with Dr. Nario. As you know, thanks for being with us, Dr. Nario. Hi Steve, thank you for having me again. Always a pleasure. Okay, so Dr. Uh, Nario is at Biointegrative Health Center in Reno, Nevada. You can check them out online and see all the different treatments they have and what they do there. So it's Biointegrative um, is the medicine that uh, Dr. Nario practices. So we're going to talk about estrogen um, and low estrogen. How do you treat it? Um, if it is low, when does it get low? Uh, talk about menopause a little bit and just what some of the facts are about um, estrogen. And so we're, uh, my questions are going to kind of go that way. And um, First, tell us, what is estrogen, doctor? Well, Steve, this is a very common thing that I see in the clinic. I mean, I see a lot of female patients. Even though I'm a male provider, it doesn't mean I only see males. So this is something also coming from, from the masses that I see. So anyway, estrogen is a group of steroid hormones that plays a key role in the development and regulation of female uh, the rep female rep reproductive system and organs, and even development of sexual characteristics. Uh, however, just to make mention, it's not only for females, but also men, they have small amounts of this, which contributes to also various uh, physi physiological functions. Uh, going back to our main topic, not just to discredit men, females, uh, estrogen is primarily produced in the ovaries. Uh, although produced uh, also in the fat cells and adrenal glands. So remember fat cells, that's why we don't like it. It produces estrogen, we can create excessive amounts of it. And also you, we see this in puberty, it's, uh, it's high. That's why the mood of your te to, to teenagers are kind of lab labile. Um, estrogen promotes development of breasts, wiring of hips, and even onset of uh, menstruation. And through the reproductive years, estrogen helps regulate the menstrual cycle and prepares the uterus for pregnancy. And here's one thing that I'm going to be maybe expounding on a little bit. There are actually what we call fake estrogens out there. And these are the poisons of the environment that actually when it gets into our system becomes what we call endocrine disruptors. And this now makes the body and organs dysfunctional. Those are like xenoestrogens, right? From That's plastics correct. and that stuff like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Bad stuff. Right. So, um, what do you do? And, and I know estrogen is very important for men too. It's it just, they have smaller amounts, but we're mainly talking about women here, right? So, mm -hmm. um, what, what do you do, um, if someone's estrogen is low and, um, when does it become low? So mm -hmm. what, what do you do? do you, is, is, can you, can you give estrogen or how does that work? Yeah, um, I, I guess this is something that in, cl in the clinical um, presentation, uh, when you have somebody who has low estrogen, usually it's menopausal women that has this, and they actually go through what we call hormone replacement therapy. And in this in this situation, we have different choices, synthetic or bioidentical. Of course, we go for bioidentical, which is the nature of our therapies. And these are the specific options that we give. And I don't know if this, yeah, you, I'll tell you about the problems that it entails when actually you have these low estrogen states. Yeah. Okay. So, um, when, when you give, when you need to, you decide that it's in someone's best interest to give them estrogen, what are the benefits of this? What are the benefits of estrogen? Steve, benefits of estrogen, so many. Many women just think it's all about sexuality, it's estrogen, it makes me feminine. Not really. These are the things that we superficially understand about estrogen. But the things that I want to emphasize on would be things that we do not see, but we only feel. One would be bone health. People who are low in estrogen, high risks of osteoporosis and breaking bones. Number two, low estrogen, also with other hormones, Cardiovascular risks are, are higher for these women, higher strokes, higher heart attacks, more cholesterol levels accumulating in the blood vessels. Another one would be, oh, I have brain fog every day because now I'm like past that menopausal stage. Uh, that's the, re the reason for that is because your brain 
or the female brain runs on estrogen and also the other hormones, thus playing a big role in cognitive function for women, preventing Parkinson's, MS, and even Alzheimer's, and also skin. That's why, of course, when women get older, wrinkly skin. Estrogen stretch it out, builds collagen, improves hydration, elasticity, and thickness of the skin. And, and that's why these are the things that I want to emphasize that as early as possible, we need to address these problems for the anti-aging uh, benefits of, of women to, to maximize it as early as possible. Okay, so that's really a big benefit on, uh, you know, hormone replacement. And if a woman needs estrogen, it's a, it's a big deal for helping uh, the anti-aging Right. So it's going to help you age better or age less, however you want to put it, I guess. Mm -hmm. So um, and you also mentioned some problems that occur, um, you know, after menopause, I think um, th those problems like osteoporosis, if your estrogen is low, right? Mm hmm. Okay, so um, yeah, we had a question. A lady wanted us to talk about osteoporosis. We're not, that's not this topic yet, but uh, you just said that low estrogen could cause um, osteoporosis. Correct. So um, a lot of people, you know, they, they, they may think that there's dangers of d taking exogenous estrogen. Um, can taking estrogen, is that dangerous? Can that, is that dangerous in any way? Can that cause cancer or anything like that? Well, Steve, this is a good point that you brought up because again, cancer is always affiliated with the word estrogen. And again, that's why there's a fear of using this, this specific medicine. Uh, they, and the reason for that is, I mean, unfortunately, if the people always affiliates that with cancer, they will just accept the changes of menopause, hot flashes, irritability, um, being miserable. Um, not, I have seen relationships and going to divorce and separation. And, and as th this is what they saw on TV, friends told them about it, the internet and not being educated by their medical doctor. So let's now clear this up and, and the, for the bigger elephant in the room should be addressed. Does estrogen cause cancer? Actually, it does not. It, the, avoiding estrogen again, if and also, is not the res, uh, is not the solution to this. It should always be. We always have this misconception of we should use it for a short period of time. It worsens dementia. It actually drives aging. But why would nature make a hormone? Uh, actually, that would actually drive humanity and be pro carcinogenic. It's something that's beneficial, but why does the body make it? And if it's cancerous, so it's really not. The reason why people were misconstrued about this is a study called the WHI study. And this is actually a study that were women who were given hormones, especially estrogen and, um, and synthetic. So you have to remember, they use synthetic products here. And this study resulted in increased risk of breast cancer and increased risk of blood clots. So these are the two reasons why people run away from estrogen so fast, and even your doctors wouldn't write for it. The thing here is, in this study, the study had been reanalyzed after 19 years, and they saw the reason for these outcomes was because they were using synthetic hormones and not bioidentical hormones. And one of that is a, a progesterone, synthetic progesterone called medoxyprogesterone. And this is the one that they saw was the culprit to actually increase the, the chances of having a breast cancer because it's so stimulatory. Um, and even let's say they, in this study, they also used equine or uh, horse estrogen. And that's a thing. It's very strong also. But the thing here is even when they re, re dissected the study, they saw that even the equine um, estrogen by itself was actually protective for the breast. And it's, it was only this, this synthetic progesterone, which is medroxyprogesterone, as I repeat, was the one that stirred the pot. And now we have newer studies to prove that estrogens are very safe. It's unfortunate that 
where do we see these synthetic progesterones? In birth control pills. So now our younger generation of women are now in danger of actually forming these specific cancers that we're fearing about. And again, the conclusion, even horse hormones, uh, but we don't promote that. I, I always want to use bioidentical hormones can actually have the chance of reducing breast cancer incidence and also fatality of, of, any, of any conditions in terms of having death or illness from it. Yeah, it makes sense that um, you want your hormones at, you know, natural, healthy levels um, because that's where they are when people are younger. And as they age, you want to keep those right there. Um, but what would you say to, to people that um, are concerned about uh, things like this that maybe could cause breast cancer? Um, what, what would you say to them? You know, what conditions should they be cautious of if, mm -hmm. if that's a concern of theirs? Right. So women are, are cautious about, of course, uh, number one, uh, what would predispose me if I use estrogen to build cancer, right? So we always go back to the basics, and you know this, that we need to fix any type of inflammation in the body. When you have, for example, diabetes, you have high cholesterol, you have high blood pressure, so and obesity. These are inflammatory risk factors that actually would make the complications of estrogen be worse. So correcting those basic issues definitely is something that we do and assess, of course, with your doctors as well. But there are two things I want to emphasize here that sometimes are getting overlooked. So when, when I mention about somebody who will have a higher a chance of having breast cancer would be somebody who did not give birth. Not having ever having a baby increases a woman's risk by getting breast cancer by almost 30%. The younger you are at your first pregnancy, the more lifelong protection you'll have against breast cancer. I'm not promoting a teenage pregnancy here, but that's just the, the studies. Women who give birth before age 20 have the higher protections. It's rarely documented that in cases of women getting breast cancer, if she got pregnant before the age of 18. Yet the older you are, when you give birth, the opposite it is true. Women who have their first child after the age of 35 and have missed out on the surge of protection of high levels of progesterone and estrogen in estriol form during pregnancy has a 40% increased risk of breast cancer compared to women who have kids before the age of 20. And lastly, age. The older the age, the less progesterone you have. Thus, the more risk for breast cancer. As women get older and are in a less estrogenic state, they are more at risk of getting breast cancer, even if they never took estrogen therapies. If estrogen were carcinogenic and the main cause of breast cancer, we would expect breast cancer rates to decline with menopause, but the opposite occurs. And this is the reason why. Very interesting. Yeah. So it's almost like the, the estrogen is important. And um, I, I guess you don't plan your family according to this, right. but... Uh, right. You, I think what you said is that you have a lower risk if you have a child at age 20, right. as opposed to if your first child is at 36. Yeah, yeah that's right. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, as always, doctor, thanks for your input. Thanks for being with us. And we will see you next time. Well, thank you, Steve, for having me as always. And as we all know, know that our knowledge is your power to better health. And thank you for letting me provide you with the edge in longevity and health maintenance, which I call the biological edge or the bio edge.